this is Misha, and today's video is on the Italian Carcano Rifle Series. In my hands is a standard Model 91 or 1891 Infantry Rifle. Well, the Carcano was kind of designed by commission, but it mostly was uh, Salvator Carcano was mostly to do with it, at least he was in charge of the project. And it came about beginning around 1890. At that time, Italy was equipped with old Vetterli rifles in a 10.4mm black powder round. And they wanted to go to a new modern smokeless powder cartridge. So they adopted a 6.5mm smokeless round, so quite small diameter, quite quite advanced for the day. So then they, then they designed a rifle to fire it. Well, the Carcano rifle isn't anything revolutionary. What they did is they kind of took the features they liked. It, it took a lot of heavy cues from Manlicker's designs, also the 1888 Commission rifle of Germany. It's a standard tone, turn bolt gun. The bolt actually moves just like on a Mosin to Gaunt by pulling the trigger back. As you can see, it's just a standard standard bolt, two lug in the front bolt. It feeds from a six round and in block clip fed, fed magazine like a Steyr 1895 would. This was a rimless round, so quite advanced for its day. You've got a safety in the back right here. You just twist it up. Now your gun's on safe. You can even decock it if you want. So quite, quite a useful safety for an already bolt action. More so than a Mosin Nagant at any rate. This has about a 31 inch barrel. Cleaning rod under it. Standard bayonet lug for a knife type bayonet. Has some interesting sights. The rear sights are quite adjustable, as most of these were for the era. You just push this button here and adjust it up and down. It also has a battle setting if you flip it over here, and it just gives you a fixed battle sight to use. Even has a handy little inlet on the stock to put your other side into. It's kind of neat. It's a relatively light, it's a very robust, durable gun. One thing they did to extend barrel life is they used gain twist rifling, which meant here near the chamber it starts off kind of lazier and then it tightens up as you get towards the muzzle. This was good because it kind of lessened erosion. This example was made in 1918 during World War I. These would actually be in production from around 1892 through 1918. And then they would actually do a small production run before World War II, around 1937, 1938. So there was a small little, small little run in the 30s they did of these long rifles. Yeah, this is a standard infantry weapon that Italy went to war with in World War I. And there's not much more I can say about it. It's, they are fun to shoot. The 6.5mm cartridge is light recoiling. Of course, it's kind of expensive and somewhat difficult to find today. They are reliable, simple, easy to take the bolt apart. They were relatively inexpensive to mass produce compared to other guns of the day. It is a lot like, I'd say not, not quite as nicely made as an infield, but better made than uh, say a Mosin Nagant. So it's just kind of, you know, one of the guns that was in use, you know. It, um, it did its job and did it well. Carcano rifle. <laughs> well, in World War I, Italy was taken off guard, as were most nations, to be honest, and did not have enough rifles. So what it did is it actually took some of its old Vetterli Vitelli long rifles and sleeved the tin Point four millimeter bore to fire six and a half millimeter Carcano. They basically soldered a sleeve inside. They bored it out and soldered a liner in. So it still has the 33 
inch original long barrel side mounted bayonet lug. This, this particular example was pro originally produced in 1884. Now these guns were originally made for smoke uh, for black powder, so firing smokeless powder in them is a dubious proposition at best. But as an emergency use only gun, it, it gave it gave at least some more guns, and they actually reworked uh, tens of thousands of these in this manner. Typical veterly bolt action. Two locking lugs, but they're small and again not especially strong. In addition to lining the barrel, they also fitted a Carcano style six round box magazine, which takes Carcano six round in block clips. Otherwise, these, this has the standard safety here that most of these have right here. See? It actually locks the action and decocks it. It's kind of neat. It's an interesting safety. Yeah, this is one of the guns that was in emergency use. Initially, the single-shot version of the Italian Veterly was known as the M70. Then they added a four-shot box magazine for the original 10.4 millimeter, and it was called the M70-87. And then when they reworked these to fire 6.5 Carcano, they were renamed again M70-87-15. So, getting quite a long name. Again, they were meant for emergency use only. They were not meant to be for sustained fire. They were mostly issued to second line reserve type units in World War I. Some did see combat though. And several were given to African soldier allies of Italy in the 1930s because Italy was still cash strapped, didn't have enough guns, so they sent these secondary guns to the African allies and they were used. Um, Quite a bit, actually. Some of these kind of remain in service and use in Africa through the 50s. But um, if you own one, I, I definitely wouldn't recommend shooting 6.5 Carcano standard out of it. If you have to shoot it, try to download your cartridge at least 25%. Because these old guns, they originally were made for black powder. They're 100 and... Well, this one's 130 years old. So that much time hasn't made them any stronger. Surprisingly, the barrel sleeving was actually done quite well, and there's not really any trouble with the lining coming out, but the problem is the bolt lockup. It's just not a very strong. But they're definitely an interesting part of Italian history. Very long, very big. It just shows you how much they needed any kind of rifle they could get in World War I, as unprepared as they were. But then again, most of Europe was unprepared for a massive protracted war. Just thought we'd toss this in to share with you. We'll move on. All right, moving on. After Italy adopted the standard M91 Carcano long rifle in 1892, it soon adopted a carbine version in 1893. I believe it's specifically in March or June, but mid, to early to mid 1893. The first pattern a carbine adopted was the cavalry carbine here. This particular one was made in the 1930s, but it's the same as the earlier ones. It has a 17.7 inch barrel. We have an adjustable rear sight, whereas the long rifle would go out to about 2,000 meters. This will go out to about 1,500, so a little, little bit shorter, a little less range, but still a adjustable sight. It has a cutback form, very truncated. The earliest cavalry carbines did not have an upper handguard, but this is very quickly added in production. Of course, most noticeably, we have this underfolding spike bayonet. Now there's a total of nine or ten variations of these bayonet assemblies. This is one style with a lever type release. Flip this down, pull it out. And then put your lever back up to lock it in. That's one style. There's an 
another style we'll get to with a push button later in the episode. Within a notch in the stock. Definitely see why they went away from the lever, it's not near as convenient. But that was one style. We have side mounted sling bars. They have little rollers on them so the sling will not bind. And the cleaning rod, which is a two piece affair, is actually stored in the buttstock here. It's a small, uh, small trap door. You can hear it rattling inside. But, yeah, the cavalry carbine. Otherwise, it is a carcano. Oh, it has a turned down bolt as well, like most carbines do. Still feeds from the in block clips and all that. Same uh, trigger system. But yeah, these went into production in 1893, and they would continue in production through World War One and 18, excuse me, 1918. They would actually start production up again around 1932 and produce them until about 1937 or 1938. The only difference in these two production runs, your earlier ones will have a hex-shaped barrel back here, and the ones from the 30s, at least beginning around 35, will have a round-shaped barrel. So not unlike a hex Mosin versus a round receiver Mosin, uh, the same thing. These were obviously very popular. They were issued to cavalry. They were also issued to support troops and those needing like a PDW, personal defense type gun. Obviously it's very short, it's quite light, it's very handy, it has a built-in bayonet, which um, it was kind of a secondary use. Cavalry soldiers are actually expected to use their sabers primarily, so the bayonet was almost an afterthought, but they included it just in case. It's also why it's not detachable. Yeah, the Carcano Cavalry Carbine, very popular. You see quite a few of these today. And a handy, neat little rifle. Well, Italy um, quickly became fond of the carbine pattern. So in 1897, they adopted a second type. This is the 91 TS, or Troops Special, Special Troops. And it has the same 17.7 inch barrel, has the same adjustable rear sight. But in most other respects, it's like the long, like a short version of the long rifle. In fact, early versions of these actually had straight bolt handles, but that was quickly changed to a turned down bolt. Has bottom mounted sling swivels early on. Later, they would add side mounted sling swivels as well during World War I, or maybe right before, but you start to see these appear. I think this one's dated 1916, so pretty pretty early, mid-war gun. This has the hex barrel like I was discussing here. Action's the same. Has a full-length stock all the way out, or at least most as far out as it would be on the um, rifle as well. Cleaning rod under the barrel. The biggest thing with the um, TS is this transverse bayonet look. Point it at you, just so you can see. You actually attach the bayonet from the side and swing it on. If I had one, I would show you, but I do not have a transverse bayonet for this, unfortunately. But they did that so it was easier to lock on in tight spaces and also couldn't be pulled off or anything. It was more secure. The barrel is slightly, has this little um, nipple or inclusion right here to help align the bayonet. The front side is actually part of the barrel mounted directly on, it's not on a ring. The sling swivel is part of this uh, bayonet assembly in the front here. There is not a second bar barrel band. This uh, side sling swivel is just directly into the wood. But yeah, the 91 TS went in production in 1897 and they would actually keep these into production until right after World War I until 1919. Although examples from 1919 actually seem like they were built from leftover existing parts in the arsenals. So they were just kind of using up old stock. And then a lot of these would, uh, would stay in service through the 20s and even 30s. Both of these carbines, like the long rifle, would use the gain twist rifling. 
they wouldn't get away from that till much later. But very popular. These were issued to a lot of support troops like artillery crews and uh, they were also used to, um, to storm trenches in World War I. Trench raiding, they really liked these because of the detachable bayonet, the short length, the, the long hand guards, so they wouldn't burn their hand on a, uh, on a hot barrel. But these are very popular with those kinds of units. In fact, this pattern, the TS, would become so popular that later on in the 30s it would become the de facto standard issue in Italy. So it was a very, very popular design. It is not stored anything in the buttstock. It's solid here, unlike the cab carbine, because again, the cleaning rod is under your barrel up here. But uh, very neat guns. You don't see many of these that still have the transverse bayonet lug. Most of those are replaced later. Some made in World War I, but also have a standard bayonet lug, so they could use the same bayonet as the long rifle, but a true, authentic 91TS should have a transverse. But yeah, that we would just share these two. The early World War I era Carcano carbines. We'll move on. Alright, after the war, after World War One, Italy really started to fall in love with carbines. They were very effective, both models, during trench use. Excuse me, I need to decat a gun. Please move. Please. Shamey. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry for that. Anyway, so after the war, they uh, they discovered, they decided that the 17 and 0.7 inch rail carbine was really handy and it was really useful. And in 1922, everyone's favorite dictator, Benito Mussolini, took power, march on Rome, and one of his main things was to increase Italy's military size and prestige and all that. The only problem was Italy didn't have any money. They had a bunch of old rifles, though, left over from the war, many of them with very worn muzzle crowns because of cleaning rod use and just, you know, being used in the war. So what they did, they commissioned the Turney Arsenal to take 91 long rifles with worn bores and to cut them down into 91 carbines with a 17.7 inch barrel like this one here. This was officially designated as the 9124 and uh, they cut down the stock too. They cut down the cleaning rod. It has a standard bayonet lug here as you can see. Now the rear sight, and this is actually how you can tell a 9124 easy, it's one of the few carbines, if not the only, that actually has the long ladder rear sight. But they actually moved the blade further forward on it, so it's a 1,500 meter sight, not 2,000, like it would have been on the rifle. So this is the only carbine that really has this big long sight because it was originally a long rifle. They also put turned down bolts in these. And there's a few different sling swivel arrangements. You'll have either bottom sling swivels, or you might have side, or like on this one, just a bottom in the back, but then a side welded onto the barrel band in the front. And honestly, this is the most common configuration I've seen personally, is having three swivels, two in the front, one in the back. Well, the turning arsenal converted about 260,000 of these between 1924 and 1929. Now, because of the game twist rifling, it was hoped that the barrels would be in good shape and they would be accurate. Well, the nice thing is they did cut away most of the wear, but the problem is a lot of the barrel left in the back, the back half, had the slower twist to the rifling, so this presented some accuracy issues. Some people claim these things couldn't even hit the side of a barn if you were inside it, but obviously they were useful enough because they converted over a quarter million, and these were in service for a very long time, at least through World War II. So the M9124 effectively replaced the M91 rifle. But after they converted that many, they were starting to run out of old rifles that uh, were worn enough to warrant the chop job. So they adopted this model here. This is the 9128 carbine. It's incredibly similar to the 24. Still has the same. 17.7 inch barrel, turn down bolt, has the bottom sling swivels, same type of bayonet lug, standard rifle, 
The handguard attachment is actually different. The 24 uses a um, rifle style on the front. This still uses like a TS style hook to hold it on. Now the big difference here is we've got a short carbine rear sight purpose built as opposed to a converted long. And most of these, if not all that I've seen, have both side sling swivels. You get one up here and you have a small one cut further forward on the wrist. If you noticed a lot of the carbines like that uh, 91 TS we just looked at, the sling swivel was further back here. This is smaller and further forward. But yeah, now the, the 9128 was either a purpose-built new rifle, as this one was here, or they were older 91 TSs that were restocked and upgraded to the 9128 standard. So some 9128s would actually be older guns from World War I that were updated. These would still have game twist rifling, still same mechanical operating system. And along with the 9124, these two models would become the de facto standard issue gun in Italy during the 1930s. So these carbines effectively replaced the long rifle. They still used the cavalry carbine as it was needed, but um, these special type carbines became not so special and standard issue. This one's in really nice shape. It was refurbished after World War II, in fact. Typical Carcano. Very nice, though. Pretty fun. These are all still in 6.5 by 52, by the way. Alrighty, we'll move on. And just as a side note in the Carcano story, I thought I'd mention the Japanese Type I. In 1938, Japan, specifically the Navy, contracted with Italy to produce for it a modified Carcano for use in, well, by the Japanese. These would be produced by Beretta, Brescia, and Turney, and maybe a few other subcontractors are used as well. It's an interesting mix of Carcano and uh, Arasaka features. We have an Arasaka length, 30 it's about a 30 point, 30 and a half, 431 inch barrel. It's chambered for 6.5 by 50 Arasaka, Japanese. Cleaning rod under the barrel. This takes a Japanese Type 30 bayonet. Typical forearm with short handguard. We have a Japanese style ladder rear sight. It's very much not dark, and this one doesn't want to stay up. Anyway, we've got a couple of these, and this one. It's got a little broken spring. You know, you get the idea. And we have a Japanese internal five-round magazine as opposed to a Carcano in-block style. On the other hand, oh, we also have a Japanese two-piece style buttstock. As you see, it has a dovetail here with the bottom section like you'll see on all the Arasakas. On the other hand, we have a car, very much a Carcano style bolt system. It's Carcano style safety. And a Carcano style trigger. Now, these would be produced from well, 1938, 1939, with deliveries to Japan lasting until about 1940, and they would do about 120,000 for their ally. Remember, these were, they were both allies in the Axis powers at the time. And uh, these would mostly be used on board Japanese ships and at guard posts, but some would be issued to the Japanese Special Landing Force. This one I have in my hands here has the original length buttstock. Uh, a good number would actually have the stock cut down by about an inch to better shoot us, um, fit the stature of Japanese soldiers trying to shoot it at the time. One interesting fact, these Italy would make these out of a harder, denser wood than the wood that Japan would use, so they're actually heavy, much heavier than an Arasaka. The flip side of that, along with the long barrel, these are quite popular with, with marksmen because they had virtually no recoil and were very stable. So. It's kind of a win-lose there. You have a heavier rifle, but it's more stable. But yeah, the Japanese Type I, made in Italy. And um, yeah, it has just some features of the Carcano and some features of the Arasaka. And 
quite an interesting side note for either nation. We have this rifle in our Japanese video as well, so from Ramfo, please check that out. All right, we'll move on. Well, in 1938, the Italian military changed things up a bit. It had been using the 6.5 by 52 millimeter cartridge for over 40 years at that point, and while it was a very light recoiling, very flat shooting cartridge. It was really good at taking out soft targets, but they desired something with a little more power, a little more penetration, a little more oomph, which is a common theme. You see the same thing with Japan. But they didn't want to go to a whole new receiver. They wanted to keep the same Carcano magazine action receiver. So what they did, they looked and they figured out how much they could scale up the 6.5 round. And then what they came up with was a the cartridge 7.35 by 51, which is what this rifle is chambered in here. So choosing the basic same dimensions, I think even the bolts are interchangeable, it's just you've got a little bit bigger bullet, about 0.8 of an inch, so not even an inch larger. I mean, excuse me, not an inch, that would be huge. A millimeter. There we go. It's been a long day. <laughs> anyway, to go with the new round, they developed the M38 short rifle. Well, they had been using carbines for over a decade, and while they were very handy, they were easy to use for mechanized units and a highly mobile military, which is what Italy was trying to transform itself into after World War I. They did not have a lot of range compared to a long rifle, and they just weren't quite as versatile. So they decided to go to a short rifle, which is a pattern that a lot of people had been using for a long time. Britain had been using the SMLE Enfield short rifle, the U.S. had the 1903 Springfield, and Germany in 1934 had switched to the K-98K short rifle. France also went to the MAS-36, which was a short rifle. So by 1938, pretty much every other major power was using a short rifle bolt action. The Carcano M38 has a 22-inch barrel, so in between the rifle and the carbine. It fires the new cartridge. The handguard is attached in a new way. In fact, the whole stock is different. You see it has grasping grooves. It has a front sling swivel here on the side. It has a rear sling swivel, kind of like a cavalry carbine on the side. There's no bottom swivel. Still uses an, a six-shot magazine fed by in-block clips, though. Still has the same turn-down bolt. Now it's going to have, all these are going to have the round barrel here because that was switched over before this went into production. And the big change though, these have fixed rear sights. The, all Carcanos before had a battle sight here, but then they had an adjustable arm as you've seen. This just has a fixed rear sight here instead. They figured, well, most combat takes place at 200 meters or less, so if we do a battle sight in that area, then uh, it'll be sufficient. Another major change was they went to a new pattern of bayonet. It's kind of a neat bayonet. It is permanently attached to, not permanently, excuse me, it's not permanently attached to the rifle. It has a button here to remove it, standard type bayonet lug here. But if you want it on the gun, you can keep it on there. And it's basically meant to be permanently or semi-permanently left on the gun. That's kind of the idea. What they did they took the folding hinge from the cavalry carbine and moved it into a blade bayonet with a grip. So it folds out. As you can see, there's a slot in the stock for it. So when you need it, you can deploy it. And when you don't, you just press the button, lock it out, lock it back in. There you go. So it's basically meant to be left on the rifle semi-permanently. Well, these went into production along with the new cartridge in 1938 and would actually only be in production until about 1940. Most are dated 38 or 39. The new round wasn't terrible, but the problem was right after this was adopted, Italy joined Germany in World War II and then the logistics of trying to keep two cartridges in the field, 6.5 and 7.35 at the same time, were, were enormous, were being an enormous drain on 
the, the Italian military. They were hoping to phase out 6.5 altogether for the new cartridge, but the war got in the way and it wasn't possible. Again, a very similar situation to what happened to Japan and why it had the 7.7 .7 and the 6.5 in service at the same time. But unlike Japan, Italy wasn't able to cope as well. So after only a brief period of time, after only a, a, couple, of th a couple of hundred thousand were made, these went out of production. Now, interestingly, in 1939 or 1940, sources are unclear, maybe 1941, about 94,000 were actually given to Finland. And this is one of those. It has the SA on the receiver. Now, in Finland, these were not well liked. Mostly because they didn't fire a standard cartridge, but also because of the fixed rear sight. They wanted something with adjustable sights for the longer ranges required in Finland. So these were not very popular in Finland. Most of them ended up getting given to um, coastal batteries, artillery units, or the Navy. Basically, people who didn't need a rifle as their primary weapon. In Italy, these would be quickly pulled out of frontline service, and people who had been formally issued these would be given back weapons in 6.5 millimeter. Now they, even though they were getting rid of the, getting rid of the 7.35 round, they kept the 38 short rifle. It was kind of redesignated. I'm not sure how formal it was, but you see them today referred to as the 91/38. This would be the exact same pattern, but in 6.5 millimeter. And the only real difference is the marking on the rear sight where it has the caliber. Now, some people think that uh, some 7.35s were rebarreled to 6.5. This is incorrect. All 6.5 9138s left the factory in that caliber. Minor point, but there you go. So by 1940, the 7.35 was out, but the rifle it was based with actually remained in, in production until at least 1944. And they would make quite a few of these, several hundred thousand at any rate. Now, since they went to the M38 pattern, oh, and one other change that I can't show you on camera, they abandoned the game twist rifling with the M38. So these would have standard rifling from now on. Well, when they did that, they also updated the 91 cavalry carbine and the 91 TS carbine to the 38 style. So this example here is a cavalry carbine. This is a 91 38. As you can see, it has the fixed rear sight, and it'll have standard rifling as opposed to gang twist. Also, this one has the push button style release for the bayonet, which is the most common. Let me get this out here. It is easier to use, just you don't have to use so many actions. Just press it to un unlatch it, and it does seem a little sturdier, too. So they would keep manufacturing the cavalry carbine in a slightly updated form, still beginning in 1938. And these would be in production until at least 1943. Maybe even later, it's hard to say. They definitely would be in use much longer. But, you know, Italy still needed these for special troops that needed a very compact gun. Still has the, set, the same 17.7 inch barrel. Yeah, pretty much like the previous model except for the different sites and of course this one had a little different man that but yeah these are what came after and we've returned back to the 6.5 millimeter round after a very brief uh, stint with another one and uh, quite a few of these will be kept in Italian service after the war briefly as well until being replaced by newer guns like the M1 Grand We'll move on. Well, the M38 short rifle was Italy acknowledging that not everything could be done with a carbine. So they went to its 22 inch barrel. But it still used a fixed rear sight. So in all truth, it didn't have a lot of range and flexibility. So in 1940, they started experimenting again with a long rifle. And in 1941, they adopted the 9141 short infantry rifle, which is what this is here. This is in 6.5. These were never done in 7.35 because by the time these came out, the cartridge was gone. And really what this is, is it's an updated 91 infantry rifle. It has a slightly shorter barrel, 
We're at about just over 27 inches here. So shorter than the original infantry rifle, but longer than any of the carbines or short rifle. We have a standard bayonet lug, standard cleaning rod under the barrel. We do have a short upper hand guard here. We have side and bottom sling mounts. And we have an adjustable rear sight again. Now, interestingly, they actually went to using the carbine style small rear sight, so up to 1,500 meters. They didn't go back to the full 2,000, which is probably logical. It, you know, even at 1,500 meters, that's very optimistic, so it possibly is a little cheaper to make too, being a little smaller. Of course, we still have a round receiver. We actually have a return to the straight bolt handle as well. This is the first non-turned down bolt handle we've had in the Carcano in a long time. Yeah, this thing was adopted 50 years after the original, and it quickly became standard issue. It went into production very quickly, and hundreds of thousands were made between 1941 and 1945, or 1944, sources kind of argue, but towards the end of the war anyway. They're still making these, and they made quite a few. The M9141 long rifle, well, short, short and long rifle, short infantry rifle, I should say. Um, it's an interesting gun. Like the original long rifle, it has very light recoil. It's very flat shooting. Uh, it gave infantry um, a longer gun, and it is still, you know, saving a few inches off the original. This is kind of analogous to the Mosin Nagant M91 versus the Mosin Nagant M9130. It's made a little bit cheaper for mass production. Again, we've, we've gone away from the game twist rifling, so it's cheaper to do standard rifling. And um, we have the round barrel here, and we've got this short rear sight. So a little bit cheaper to make than the original, and a um, little bit more maneuverable, but we're not sacrificing as much as we were with the carbines. You don't see too many of the 9141s today. Most of what you see are the carbines or maybe the original long rifles, but these are out there and some of them are in very nice condition because they didn't really see much use at all during the war. They were made later on. Now this one here was made in 1941, so it's one of the early ones that might have actually seen use. And they would keep these in service after the war until the M1 Grand and M1 Carbine came into Italy. Yeah. This is the last major Carcano model adopted in Italy. And it's definitely the last long rifle after, you know, um, over 20 years of uh, carbines. Well, we have one more we thought we'd mention. This is kind of an interesting footnote, side note to the Carcano story. This is an M9138 S TS type carbine. What makes this one interesting is that it is in 8mm Mauser. You can see it's marked 7.9 on the rear sight. Has about a, oh yeah, about a 17.7, .7, maybe 18 inch barrel, maybe just a smidge longer. It's built on 38 pattern with the fixed rear sight and standard rifling. This one is magazine fed. It uses the same in-block clips, but they've been modified for 8mm Mauser. When they did that, they went from holding 6 to holding 5. They added two recoil lugs in the stock to strengthen it for firing the stronger round. And we've just got only the bottom mounted sling swivels as opposed to bottom and side. Pretty standard, has a um, typical short upper handguard. These are interesting because no one exactly knows. I was trying to get more info on these, and there's a lot of info in books, and some of it's contradictory, so I'm not going to get into the details. It seems like as early as 1939 or 1940, Italy was experimenting with 8mm guns, but they didn't go much of anywhere. Well, in 1943, the, uh, the Germans confiscated some Carcanos in 6.5mm and used them. And then in 1945, Krikov converted about 3,000 
into eight millimeter, and those are usually single shots. So this is definitely not a creek off. This is probably a post-war. After World War II, Italy, needing money, um, rebarreled or built some Carcanos for eight millimeter and tried selling them abroad because it was a more common cartridge of the era. There was a lot of surplus guns, and you know they fired it. Italy and possibly uh, Syria purchased a good number. And most of them were used for second line or training type guns, drill type guns, but they were in service. And you can see quite a few that do have Arabic markings on the stock. This one does not. This one's in pretty good shape. A lot of the 8 mils are very well used if they went to the Middle East. And some that were used by Egypt were captured by Israel. So you might even find a few that have uh, Israeli proofs on them. But that we would just share an 8mm Carcano. I wish I could tell you definitively more about them, but it seems like most were just done as a commercial project in Italy. But some were done in 8mm during World War II for use by the Germans. Well, we've had a good little overlook here. We also have a blog article on the Carcano, so please check that out for more info and just, you know, if you have any questions at all, put, post them below. The best total production number I could find for all Calcano models is about 3 million, with a significant portion of that being carbines. And quite a few of those, several hundred thousand, being the M9141 long rifle as well. And also keep in mind, a lot of guns that were originally manufactured as the M91 long rifle were cut down into the M9124 uh, carbine. So. A lot of the M91s don't survive to this day. Well, if you have any questions, post them below. And as always, really appreciate you tuning in. This is Misha, and uh, we'll catch you next time.